Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number 21, Meditation. The highest way of thinking is to stop thinking. My guest today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine, thank you, Rick. Thank you very much again for inviting me to be here. It's very, very important to speak about meditation because there are many, many people who are very much immersed into learning to meditate, practicing meditation, but it is also very important to clarify the purpose of meditation because isn't it to awaken our consciousness, our soul consciousness, to reach illumination, to reach enlightenment. So otherwise, we can meditate about many, many things, and but are we going to progress really into the highest purpose of life, which is reaching illumination, enlightenment? For example, I can be watching a tree for years and years and years to sit down under a tree meditating about the tree. Maybe after 20 years, I would be able to see what's inside of the tree, awakening my third eye, my creative imagination, my clairvoyance, and maybe I will be able to see what's inside, you know, the spirit, the soul of the tree, the different levels of manifestation of life, the molecular, the atomic, you know, and even the, you know, we could say the electronic, you know, force within the tree. Now, am I going to be able to speak with the soul of the tree? Maybe yes, maybe not. But then 40 years have passed already. Well, I reached that level of communication. But what about my own enlightenment, my own awakening of my consciousness and also my own transformation regarding learning to spiritualize my matter, to spiritualize not only my physical body, but my astral body, my mental body, and even my soul to spiritualize them all, then I can ascend to be able to connect with my spirit. So then my spirit would be able to crystallize and become one with the divinity. How much have I really advanced into that? Well, Gnostic anthropology teaches us the foundation of meditation and, of course, was recommended for those who are willing to meditate. Now, it is extremely important for every human being on earth, sooner or later, to learn to meditate because meditation is not thinking. Many people believe that through thinking, I'm meditating. No, not really. The process of thinking is connected with our languages. How many languages do we speak? You know, thousand languages, more than a thousand. Only here in Toronto, Canada, people speak 200 languages plus. So when we think, we do it in a specific language. Now, what if we say that the spirit doesn't speak? any of our common languages? What if, what if our real being speaks in an alchemist language and in a Kabbalistic language? What if we say that God speaks in a total different manner to us? You know, the founder of our school, Samael Onveor, our schools of Gnostic anthropology, he wrote in many of his books and also through many lectures, he said that there are many planets in the galaxy where, listen to this carefully, many planets in the galaxy where the mind is equivalent to the mineral kingdom. So what we feel is so important for us, to us, our mind, our thinking, in superior, you know, civilizations, it doesn't mean much as much as it means for us. So learning to meditate is extremely important because it's learning to use our emotional intelligence, our higher levels of intelligence, higher than thinking, because that is a superior intellect, as we said it before, and also the emotional intelligence is divided in two parts, superior emotional intelligence and inferior emotional intelligence. So meditation means all of that to be able to awaken, you know, our potential, to be able to use it properly, to understand the universe 
and it ruled its cosmic laws. So we could say there are thousands or even millions of ways of meditating. But here, Gnostic anthropology is the doctrine of the synthesis. We said that before. The doctrine of the synthesis means that we have to learn to understand. You know, there are two kinds of philosophies we could say on earth. Gnostic philosophy and agnostic philosophy. And agnostic, there are many, many, but Gnostic philosophy is only one. So we practice a Gnostic philosophy. And this is the doctrine of the synthesis. We explained that before. So we could say that there are two, two fundamental kind of meditation. And as we said, we could have millions of ways of meditating. That's correct. Millions of ways to get there. But at the end, we need to learn two fundamental foundations of meditation. And as we said before, the highest way of thinking is to stop thinking. So meditation means we have to shut up the mind. We have to learn to quiet the mind. We have to learn to quiet the process of thinking, because thinking is the lowest of the lowest within the intellect. The superior aspect of the mind, we said that before, is inspiration connected with our pineal gland, creative imagination connected with our pituitary gland, and creative willpower, which is a combination of both, which is learning to make a decision about how are we going to spiritualize our matter, our vehicles of the spirit, and how are we going to learn to crystallize our spirit. So this is extremely important. Otherwise, if we forget that highest purpose of life, we are going nowhere. We are going to go in circles and we will never be able to ascend into a higher stage of consciousness. We won't be able to move the level of our real being into a higher stage. We won't be able to walk to ascend through the Jacob's ladder. So the two kinds of meditation that we have to learn to practice to advance within this path of searching for perfection are number one, meditation on the annihilation of the ego, the annihilation of our subconscious to transform it into consciousness, the annihilation of the unconscious and the infraconscious, which are more evil aspects of the same ego, the egotistic perception of reality. The same Satan of all religions. We have to learn to annihilate that inner Satan, otherwise we won't be able to awaken our consciousness. We will continue being subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious. And of course, we will become perverse without knowing it. So annihilation of the ego is number one. Number two, learning to meditate in what we call the illuminating void. The illuminating void, different than annihilation of the ego. So what is that? You know, there are many, many people who practice meditation every day. Many people in India, you know, many people in Tibet, many people in all over the world, they practice meditation and, and they have learned really to control their thoughts. They have learned to quiet their mind, which is beautiful. And they have experienced the illuminating void. What is said? It means that we can learn, you know, even if we have the ego very much alive, we can learn to make our soul to get out of the ego because the ego is like a, a beast, an animal psychology that has eaten our soul. So awakening our, our creative willpower, our inspiration and our imagination, and even our intuition, we should be able to get out of the ego. The ego has eaten us, but can we get out of the stomach of the ego? It is possible. So escaping from the ego means that we can ascend into the superior dimensions of space. It could be done, you know, through astral projection techniques. It could, it could be done while we are sleeping in what we call our dreams. 
but we have to learn to stop dreaming because dreaming normally is an illusion. We have to learn to transform the process of dreaming into a conscious experience within the parallel universes. But many people have learned to visit the parallel dimensions, the superior dimensions, in a conscious stage without sleeping. So then it is possible when you enter into the superior dimensions of space to talk to superior beings. We mentioned it before, we can pay a visit to the seven spirits before the throne. We can talk to angels, archangels, Elohim. We can even talk to our real being, to our divine inner God, face to face. And as we said, God doesn't speak with words. God doesn't need to think because he's much higher than all of that. So when we establish a connection, a relationship with the divinity, we would be able to experience the joy of the presence of God. We could say it's such an overwhelming experience that we are going to cry out of joy. We won't be able to explain it with words when we come back from that stage. The illuminating void means that, experiencing God's presence within ourselves and also outside of ourselves, transcending matter and entering into more spiritual dimensions of space and time, or higher than space and higher than time. So that kind of experience will allow us to come back to our physical body, to our mind, to our emotions, with more knowledge about the divinity. It will reinforce our perception of the divinity. We will be able to say, I don't believe in God, because now I know God. I know the divinity is more real than I am. I know. It will reinforce our conviction, our perception of the inner reality of all realities. It will help us a lot to advance within this path, searching for perfection, searching for enlightenment, searching for a higher stage of consciousness, and also we could say, to reach masterhood one way or another. It will really help us a lot. But is there anything missing in this path? Yes, it is. Yes, there is something missing here. If we don't annihilate the ego, the ego will bring us back. So we can experience the illuminating void for a certain period of time, but the ego will pull us back because we forgot that we are imprisoned within the ego. The ego is a jail. It's pure hell, pure inferno. And if we are able to escape from inferno, but the ego is still alive, our inner Satan is alive, we will come back to be imprisoned within the jail that the ego created around us. So this is extremely important. We really have to learn to meditate in the annihilation of the ego. Otherwise, experiencing the illuminating void won't be enough to enter into heaven. This is extremely important. You know, we can enter into heaven, but we won't be able to stay there. We will have to come out. Because the ego cannot tolerate the voltage of heaven. The ego cannot tolerate the voltage of the spirit, of the divinity. So the ego will stay outside. But because the ego is part of ourselves, that we created ourselves, we will come back inevitable to the ego to become imprisoned again. But if we learn to annihilate the ego, we'll be free. The final, the final freedom, the final liberty, then our soul will be free. And our soul will be closer to connect with our spirit, to become one with the divinity. So both are extremely important. Now, how do we learn to annihilate the ego, practicing meditation of the annihilation, the destruction of the animal psychology? How do we learn to annihilate Satan within ourselves? You know, Christianity explained very well the seven deadly sins are the ego, other religions explain the ego in a different manner, 
but they all point to the same situation. The Ten Commandments, you know, on Mozart teach us a lot about the ego. It's, the Ten Commandments speak about cosmic laws, what should be done and what shouldn't be done. So it describes also the ego in a different way. But all religions speak about the ego. So the ego has to be annihilated. You know, the ancient Egyptians spoke about the red demons of Seth. Seth is the ego, you know, the boss of thousands of little demons that we created in past lives and also in our actual lifetime. The ego has to die if we want to ascend into levels of enlightenment, into levels of illumination. So how do we do it? What's recommended to be able to do it? Number one, we have to know our ego. <laughs> we have to write down first, write down our virtues, what you believe are your virtues, the opposite of the ego, the opposite of the seven deadly sins, and and also write your own ego. The seven deadly sins are lust, arrogance, anger, envy, greed, laziness, and gluttony. These are the seven heads of legions of demons that we all carry within. If we do the opposite, if we annihilate the ego, we'll be able to develop the opposite. Instead of lust, we will learn to make love with love. We will learn to be loyal to our other half, as a husband or, or a wife, we will be able to be loyal in a relationship, you know, and also to practice, you know, a real human sexual relationship with our sexual partner. Instead of greed, we will learn to be generous. Instead of arrogance, we will learn to be humble. Instead of envy, we'll be able to be content for the success of the others. You see, instead of anger, we will learn to be serene, peaceful in our heart. Patience and serenity will be ruling our lives. Instead of gluttony, which is drinking and eating in excess, we will be able to do the opposite. We have to learn to eat and drink with moderation. Otherwise, drinking heavily means we are going to cook our liver and we will die younger than our expecting time of life. So all of it is extremely important to understand it. So I have to write down what I believe, trying to know myself. Who am I? I am a spiritual being. I have a body, I have a mind, I have a soul. But I also have an ego. I am not the ego. The ego is an intruder that came into my life that I created myself in past life and this actual lifetime by making mistake after mistake, by not respecting cosmic law, by abusing myself and abusing other people also. So then after I write what I believe is inside of me, qualities and also defects, vices, errors, after I write it down, I have to learn to observe myself. Can I learn to watch myself? It is highly recommended that we ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my inner being, but also the wife, the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit is the Divine Mother. The Divine Mother is the spiritual aspect of matter. Matter in Latin means mother. So the Divine Mother of the universe, she is love itself. She is love itself. And she is the one who can teach me because she is the one who will annihilate the ego. She has the power to destroy those demons that I carry within myself. So by learning to observe myself, to watch myself 24 hours a day, even in my dreams while I am sleeping, if I can observe my mistakes, if I remember my dreams, you know, the divinity is teaching us something through our dreams learning to get the right interpretation of my dreams, I'll be able to learn the lessons being given to me by the universe, by life itself, because life is a school of learning. So this is extremely important, learning to observe, to watch myself. So then in my relationship with the others, 
I will discover my ego. Let's say somebody's making me very, very angry, but other people don't make me angry. Why? Because this person is touching something within myself that makes my demons of anger to appear, even they were hiding before. I didn't know I, I was so much connected with anger. I thought it was, I was a peaceful individual, but I wasn't. The founder of our school of Gnostic anthropology, he annihilated his ego 100%. And when he discovered his demons of anger, there was a moment that he was convinced that he had annihilated the demons of anger until someone, a very dear friend of him, was criticizing him and that touched, you know, him deeply and he became angry with that person. <laughs> And do you know what he did? Instead of walking away from that person, he got closer to that person to learn to annihilate those demons of anger 100%. You know, he did the opposite of what most of people would do. And he learned, thanks to that man, he learned to annihilate those demons of anger until he eliminated the seven deadly sins completely from his psyches. And this is why He's a true master, you know, and the founder of Gnostic Anthropology. He had the privilege and, and also the, the capability and the power to teach us based on his own personal experiences. This is extremely important. Sometimes our enemies are our best friends because our friends applaud our mistakes, you know, and instead of annihilating our mistakes, we reinforce them. We live in, we are okay. And of course, this is wrong. It's important to learn to respect and even to love our enemies. This is what Jesus Christ was teaching and all religions are teaching. When you love your enemy, you try to comprehend at the beginning your enemy, understanding why an enemy is an enemy. And then when you see the defects of your enemy, how much he hates you, we should learn to understand why am I being hated? What have I done wrong, you know? What about my past life? Maybe in my past life I was extremely a bad person with my enemy and now my enemy came back as my enemy. You see, all these elements have to be considered because the ego is not our real being. The ego is a legion of monsters that have eaten our soul, our consciousness. And also they become all kinds of illnesses physical illness, mental illness, emotional illnesses. And this is extremely serious, you know. We have to annihilate the ego if we really want to be free, if we really want to get connected to the divinity. If I want to spiritualize my matter, my vehicles of the spirit, that's extremely important. So in my relationship with the others, I will discover my seven deadly sins. So don't walk away from people. Many people believe, oh, if I want to become a master, I will go into a cave in a mountain far away from people. That, was to, that used to be good in the past, you know, thousands of years ago. Today, a real guru, a real master doesn't do that. Real master live among us, immersed within the multitudes. That way we can learn from the multitudes. If we are being criticized and an ego is jumping out of nowhere, we can learn more about ourselves. We can observe ourselves and discover what really is wrong with us. So writing my original list of errors, defects and vices wasn't enough because the many egos, many little demons were hiding within my psyches, my psychological universe, my inner universe. So now, thanks to my enemies, thanks to my relationship with others, I'm beginning to know myself better. So this is second stage. Number one, you write it down. Number two, observe yourself 24 hours a day in your relationship with others, with every human being on earth. Observe yourself. Learn to know yourself. Gnosis. The most important aspect of Gnosis is self-gnosis. Knowledge and self-knowledge. Okay, don't forget that. Number three, after I have discovered many of my demons, my inner demons within myself, I have to learn to comprehend, to understand 
where is this demon coming from? What makes my anger appear with certain people and not with others? Because those demons are married to other demons. Maybe somebody is touching my pride, you know, my arrogance. Somebody is saying, oh, you believe you're so good, but you are a nobody, you're nothing. You see, and we always believe we were important people, you know. We're in a position of power, maybe we're a boss, we are running a business, we're running a company, and we're very successful in business. And somebody has the guts to insult us, saying that we are nobodies. We're, that's hurting us, hurting our pride, hurting our ego. And of course, we become angry, and also we react, saying, oh, you are a nobody, you don't have the right to tell me this, you know. Of course, now it's arrogance and anger together, and even hatred, maybe, you know. If, if, I, if I have a criminal mind, maybe I can even try to make that person disappear physically, etc., etc. So all these elements are extremely important. So now I have to comprehend. It's not only my anger that has to be annihilated. It's also my pride, my arrogance, my selfishness. I'm not humble the way I thought I was. I'm not wise enough. Because you know the ego creates only enemies. Why do I have to eliminate the ego? Why? Some people believe that, oh, I need the ego to survive. We said that in a past lecture. I believe it was number eight, essence, ego, and personality. The ego is always wrong. Dear listeners, the ego is never right. Never. The ego creates enemies. And there is no small enemy. A small enemy can destroy me. A small enemy, a person that I don't pay any attention to it, can destroy me can kill me. So this is why, why should I create more enemies? Why? This is the problem of our actual humanity. We're ruled by the ego. The Bible speaks about the apocalyptic beast. Well, this is it. Either we annihilate the ego or the ego will destroy us. So the global warming, the global catastrophe that we're facing right now, earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, Tornadoes is part of nature. Nature is trying to balance. Nature is recycling because we made our planet Earth ill. Ill of what? Ill of ego. Our ego, the apocalyptic beast, is so strong, so strong that we became contagious not only to other people, but also to the planet Earth. I gave an example before, you know. When you have a big fight at home, there is hatred in your family now. There is no peace, violence, psychological violence, even physical violence. The inner plants within your home die. Why did they die? Because we transmitted to them our negativity, our negative emotions, our negative thoughts, our psychological violence, and even our physical violence kills our plants. Same thing happened with the entire planet Earth. Planet Earth is ill with our own ego. It's not the ego of nature, it's our ego. You see the point? So we have to learn to change. The planet Earth is recycling to survive, to live longer. Otherwise, planet Earth will die. We'll become another moon, and we will die with it. But planet Earth needs to survive. This is why it's recycling. Now, it's teaching us also to recycle ourselves. To annihilate the ego, otherwise we will be destroyed. Mother Nature will destroy us. Instead of becoming a friendly bacteria, we became a virus. Do you see the difference? So it's extremely important now, again, writing your own list of your vices, defects, errors, and also observing yourself, especially in your relationship with other people, number two. Number three, Comprehend yourself. Try to understand why this, why that. Why am I like this? It is highly recommended at night, before you go to sleep, try to remember what, did, what you did during the day. What have you done during the day? Can you do it backwards? Can you revise the last minute when you started meditating and now you're going back, 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 back? What about an hour before, two hours before, three hours? What did I do? Trying to remember, remember. It's hard at the beginning, of course. But after you experience for a few weeks or a few months, you will be able to do it. 
You will be able to remember where did you make the mistake, where this error, this ego, this demon appeared, manifested. Why did you have an explosion of anger? Why did you hit that person? Why, what did you do wrong today at work? What did you do wrong at home? What did you do when you were walking on the streets? What did you do wrong when you were driving? Etc., etc. You see, learning to comprehend by remembering yourself. Also, that's extremely important. Learning to remember yourself 24 hours a day because what happens? We have the tendency to forget ourselves. When we forget ourselves, we make the mistake. When you live in the past or you live in the future, and this is thinking. When you're thinking, you have the tendency to travel into the past or to travel into the future unconsciously. You don't control that process of traveling, traveling without purpose. Suddenly, you're dreaming 24 hours a day. You're not conscious. But if you learn to live here and now, here and now, here and now, 24 hours a day, because now is the only real reality of all realities. You see? So here and now, I have to learn to enjoy this particular moment because I'm learning to recycle myself. I'm learning to improve myself. I'm learning to change who I am. I'm learning to ascend within the Jacob's Ladder. I'm learning to transform from an intellectual enemy, animal into a real human being. Isn't that good? Is it that wrong? Of course not. You see, life is a school of learning. We are here to learn, to transform into higher beings. Because there are levels and levels of being. An angel is higher than we are. An archangel is much higher. An Elohim is much higher. There are superior beings who have the power to control a galaxy. Did you know that? Galactic superior beings. What about infinite superior beings who have the power to control groups of galaxies? An infinite is a group of galaxies organized. We've been told that Jesus Christ is an infinite superior individual. He had the power and the knowledge to control groups of galaxies organized in infinites. Isn't it incredible? Can we understand that? It's really very hard to understand. But to get there, we have to learn to go step by step. We are here in the level of intellectual animal because we have the animal psychology called ego. The ego is animal psychology. It's a satanic psychology. It's a perverse psychology. The seven deadly sins is pure evil. There's nothing good about that. So when we annihilate a demon, we will transform that error, that mistake, that vice into a virtue. So again, learning to write the list. Number two, learning to observe myself, to discover my demons. Number three, learning to comprehend myself. Then I will be able to understand the roots of those demons. Where are they coming from? When is, where was it when I created them? And learning to transform my way of looking at life, learning to change my way of thinking. Okay, learning to control my thoughts because we create many cockroaches of the mind. Negative thoughts, negative emotions are cockroaches that we create within ourselves that are eating our soul. This is the ego, little monster that eat our soul, our consciousness. And after I learn to comprehend number three, then now I should ask my divine mother, the mother of the universe, the queen of all queens, to help me to annihilate those demons with the power of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Remember we are made of fire and water. At that particular moment, I should ask her, and she will take me using my creative imagination into a tribunal where we will see the judges of the White Lodge, the 42 judges, and also Anubis, the chief of the 42 judges. And I will be asking my Divine Mother to help me to annihilate those demons here, in this lifetime, here and now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, now, here and now is real, because the past is gone, the past is dead, and the future hasn't come yet, 
Maybe we will never come. Maybe I will be dead in one minute from now. So the only real reality is now, here and now. So after I have done the three previous stages until I reach comprehension, I will be asking my Divine Mother, Divine Mother, help me to annihilate, please, these demons of anger. Help me to annihilate because it's a legion. After I annihilate the head of the legion, it'll be easier to destroy the other little demons. This is what David, King David, did when he fought with Goliath. He killed Goliath, decapitated Goliath, decapitated the chief of legions of demons. And all the other little demons escaped, ran away from King David. He did it to himself because Goliath lived inside of King David. And all these little demons didn't have the energy, the power to come back. He annihilated the chief of the legions, the inner Satan. And he did it. This is why King David ascended into a stage of enlightenment illumination. This is part of the, the Gospels and also the old part of the Bible, the Old Testament of the Bible, which is connected with the seven deadly sins taught by Jesus Christ. You see, so now my Divine Mother will be helping me. Let's say I don't know, I don't know how to observe myself. Then I should pray to my Divine, divine Mother, please help me to observe myself because I cannot even concentrate. You know, I'm in trouble to concentrate. Please help me to concentrate. And she will. And also it is recommended that I make a deal with the divinity, the, the feminine aspect of the divinity. For example, you see, uh, I'm drinking too much. Okay, I, I buy a case of 24 beers every weekend and I drink them all myself. Why should I drink 24 bottles, you know? Why shouldn't I drink only two today, two tomorrow, and that's it? Four beers for the weekend. Why 24? Why? Because I enjoy being drunk. So I will also enjoy when I cook my liver. And also I lose my consciousness. I won't be able to meditate. I won't be able to concentrate because, you know, uh, I became a lazy bum during the weekend, just watching television and, and drinking and, you know, and laughing, you know, and getting drunk and vomiting my soul. Come on, you know. Should I, shouldn't I change? So I make a deal with my Divine Mother. Divine Mother, instead of 24 beers, it will be only four beers. Two for Saturday, two for Sunday. Maybe two more for Friday night. That's it. I don't need any more. And I'm telling you, that sacrifice will imply that the divinity will be helping us more than before because we have earned the right to be helped. You know, nothing is free in the universe. That is an economy of nature. If I'm killing myself, I don't have the right to ask for life, <laughs> to ask to live longer because I'm killing myself. I'm an irresponsible individual. Then I have to learn to be responsible. You know, my body is not even mine. When I die, I have to return my body to Mother Nature. What is that, you know? It's important to understand that. So I'll be asking, praying, Divine Mother, please help me to concentrate better and help me to observe myself. And even in my dreams, and if I make a deal with my Divine Mother, Divine Mother Love, she will help me. Then I, I'll be able to observe myself in an incredible manner, better than before. I'll be able to concentrate. Then number two, after I observe my, and I write down now, this is a clear list of my vices and defects, my errors, my weaknesses. Now I'll be able to comprehend them. What made them appear in my life? What created them? If I cannot do it, I cannot comprehend, observe the other people. Don't criticize them. Learn from them. What make an arrogant arrogant? What make a selfish selfish? What make a greedy individual greedy? What? what what's for? What is coming from? What is it coming from? That vice, that defect. Observe what make last to appear, you know, in individuals, etc., etc. And also observe yourself. Compare and ask your Divine Mother, please Divine Mother, help me. Help me now to comprehend myself better and better and better and to be accurate, as much accurate as possible. Help me to awaken my consciousness. Divine Mother of the Universe, please pray every day to your Divine Mother. She is the one who annihilates those demons. Number four, Judgment Day. Instead of waiting for Judgment Day on, on Inferno, downstairs after I die, let's create Judgment Day here on Earth before I die. 
And I ask my Divine Mother, please, Divine Mother, help me. Now, to annihilate those demons, burn them. How do I burn them? You see the point? Learning to save my energies. Did you know that? We are talking about that we have to save energies. Oh, the electricity. You know, we have a blackout. We are going to have another blackout. Come on. The seven deadly sins are the cause that there is no energy on earth. We are responsible. We are guilty of eliminating, annihilating our own energies because we annihilate our own energies. Last, if we don't even know how to make love, do we know how to preserve our sexual energies the right way? What about anger? Every time I have an explosion of anger, do you know how much energy I'm wasting? Come on. When I am arrogant and selfish, full of myself, everybody's stupid around me except me. I'm the only intelligent individual here. Do you know how much energy I'm wasting? Applauding myself, applauding my mistakes, not recognizing my errors, my vices, my defects. How much energy I'm wasting in myself? What about greed? You know, I already have a hundred million dollars in my bank account or in assets, but I would love to get a one billion dollars, you know? Thousand, it's only a thousand million. Why not, you know? Other people are doing it, why shouldn't I? And I spend 24 hours a day trying to make that billion. In the meantime, I'm firing thousands of people because I decided to go to China, to invest in China, you know, and, or in India. So then I would close my factories here in this part of the world and of course, you know, I don't care. Who cares, you know? I'm more important than any of them, you know? I want to make my billion dollars and I will make it. You see the point? You see how much energy I'm spending? I forgot my family. I forgot my children. I forgot my wife. I forgot my employees. I forgot humanity. I forgot my soul. Do you know what I mean? I develop a stronger ego. A legion of demons are stronger than my willpower. I'm a slave. I believe I'm so important and I don't recognize I'm a slave. I'm a slave on my own ego. I'm a slave of Satan. You see the point? So I have to annihilate those demons. So my Divine Mother will help me to do that. But to do that, I have to repent. I have to accept my mistakes. I really have to accept them. And that's the trouble. People have to have the courage to repent. If you are a man, you have to have you know, pants, real pants. If you're a woman, you have to be a real woman here. You see, with principles, with human values, spiritual values. But if we don't have them, can we acquire them? Of course we can. It's up to us. It's our decision. It's our definition about the purpose of life. What am I doing here? And we're here to grow psychologically, spiritually. You see the point? So all these elements are extremely important. I'm asking my Divine Mother to annihilate those demons that had made my life miserable and also the life of others sad, painful. I'm creating a lot of pain around me and pain in my own life because my family that I, I treated badly will walk away from me. They won't love me anymore. They will end hating me because I didn't love them. I'm getting, I'm getting what I created. The law of cause and effect. You see the point? So my Divine Mother will help me to do all of that. And then when my repentance is really sincere, I'm not playing game with God. I cannot play games with God, with the divinity. In this case, the feminine aspect of the divinity. I cannot trick God. <laughs> if I believe I, I'm doing it with other people, maybe you can with other people. But before the eyes of God, it's impossible. So if you believe you can do it, I'm really sorry, my friend. I'm really sorry you cannot. You will have to pay for your mistakes. So let's be sincere, even if it is hard, even if it sounds impossible. Everything is possible, even the impossible. If I repent for real, my Divine Mother will burn those demons by learning to save my energies. You know, when I get drunk every weekend, do you know how much, en how much energy I'm wasting? When I am not drunk, I have more energy than when I am drunk. When I take drugs, do you know how much energy I'm losing? How many illnesses I'm attracting? This is the cause of illness, physical, mental, emotional. I attract illnesses, viruses of all kinds because I'm wasting my own energy. My immune system will collapse. It's already collapsed. How do I get it back? By learning to save my energies. Envy. When I am envy, oh, because somebody is very successful, you know, 
I believe I'm more intelligent than that person. Why is he so successful and I am not? Because, you know, it's a legion of demons pushing me to become envious. Why shouldn't I be happy for the success of the others? Instead of envy, I should learn from that individual. He might be doing something right and I'm doing something wrong. You know, accept that possibility. Then I won't waste those energies because envy can kill people. Maybe I will order someone to come to do something bad to that person because of envy. You see, gluttony, drinking and inky, we said that already. What about the laziness? Same situation, you know. I don't have the energy to function, to work, you know. I hate my boss. I hate my job. Well, do something that you really like. Find your vocation in life and do it after hours. You need to pay the rent. You need to eat, of course. You need to support a family. Well, find a job to do that. But in the evening, instead of drinking and, you know, partying, <laughs> don't do it. Just concentrate into opening up your own business and find a way to work in what you love. Because God will help you if you are serious about improving yourself. Help yourself, says the Bible, and I will help you. Who is saying that? The divinity is saying that. God is teaching us. God is saying that. Help yourself and I will help you. You see, the seven deadly sins, with all respect, they are pure chronic stupidity. There is no intelligence there. So, isn't it time that we learn to be really intelligent, truly intelligent, truly conscious, truly wise, truly loving individuals? You see, so the Divine Mother will help us to annihilate those demons. And we will see how these monsters are being executed, burned with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And the Divine Mother is the wife of the Holy Spirit, but she is love itself, but she is also death. She is the Divine Mother death. She is the one who will destroy those demons in Inferno, the second death. Well, she is the one who will destroy the demons here. Why do we have to wait until we die and go to Inferno? Do you like that idea? Going to hell to suffer. Isn't it better to annihilate those demons here? You see the point? Do you see the difference? So this is extremely important now. Now we're understanding better the importance of the annihilation of the ego. Learning to meditate in that. Learning to meditate in the annihilation of the ego. So both together, annihilation of the ego and the illuminating void, voice, both, I'm sorry, both have to be combined. Practice the illuminating void to get closer to God, to feel the real presence of God, and then you will get the energies at the same time to work in the annihilation of the ego because you will know that what you're doing has a real meaning. A real meaningful life will be to do both. Now, there is another problem here, that it is hard to learn to meditate because, you know, we cannot concentrate. As I said, we should ask our Divine Mother to help us to do, to learn to concentrate. But you know, there is a practice being taught by Samael Onveor in his books. It is called the Second Jewel of the Yellow Dragon Order. We should learn to quiet the mind using a specific exercise to do it. And this is maybe a very important exercise to do it before we try to meditate. You know, one of the, one of the main exercises should be pranayama. Remember pranayama, breathing technique? Breathing for a half an hour minimum, then you will be able to relax and also to re-energize your system through breathing for a half an hour. Don't do it for less. It has to be minimum a half an hour because that way you transmutate the energies. You increase your level of energies. Remember what, what we said about the energies, learning to increase the level of energies, pranayamas. But let's say pranayamas are not enough to learn to quiet the mind. Okay, you've, you've done already pranayamas and you still, the thoughts are coming back and forth, back and forth. You had trouble at work today and you're fighting with people, fighting with your boss. Maybe you will lose your job. Maybe you will be fired. You cannot stop thinking about that. Okay, it's better to shut up, to quiet the mind, to quiet the mind that you can really meditate and to find a solution, to find peace. And then tomorrow I'll be able to resolve the problem that I had today. And maybe I will find another job better. Or, you know, I will have a great relationship with my boss tomorrow. Or with someone else. Or a family situation. So this is an exercise 
connected with the second jewel of the Yellow Dragon Order. In ancient China, ancient China, you know, this is the fifth human race. Now, when the survivors from Atlantis moved to what today is Tibet, there was a, a secret organization called the Yellow Dragon Order. It's connected also with martial arts. I don't think they are here already physically. For sure they are here in the astral universe and also the mental universe where angels are part of it. But this organization existed thousands of years ago. So the exercise consists in learning to quiet the mind, the inferior mind, the process of thinking. And you know, Jesus Christ was teaching about that. If you remember Jesus Christ when he entered into Jerusalem, remember? He was riding on a donkey. You know, in esoteric language, the inferior mind is also called the donkey. Okay, Jesus Christ was riding the donkey into Jerusalem. The life of a master is a masterpiece. Remember my words. Every master lives a masterpiece life, teaching us with everything that they do. So Jesus Christ was teaching us to ride the donkey into Jerusalem. Jerusalem is heaven. The donkey is what? Is the inferior mind. If you don't ride the donkey of the inferior mind, the donkey will ride on you over your shoulders and you will transform into a donkey. What's a donkey? Isn't it a strong animal? Very stubborn and also very stupid, isn't it? Okay, so you know now the consequences of being ridden by a donkey, okay? So now it's extremely important to learn to quiet the mind, the process of thinking to be, be more specific. Now, allow me to practice an exercise together with you. Repeat with me mentally. If you believe in the Christ, you know, if you are a Christian or you are not a Christian, you can use any, any divine name. You can invoke an angel if you want. But if you are a Christian, I would recommend that you say, in the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, I command you, mind, my mind, I command you to obey my real being. Mind, my mind, I command you to relax my entire human organism from my feet to my brain. Mind, my mind, I command you to relax my entire human organism from my feet to my brain. I command you, mind, my mind, to relax my entire human organism from my feet to my brain. They will be ascending until we reach our brain. I command you, mind, to relax my feet, my ankles, the lower part of my legs, my knees, the superior part of my legs. Mind, my mind, in the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, I command you to relax my intestines, my pancreas, my liver, my spleen, my genitals, my intestines, my stomach. Mind, my mind, I command you to relax my intestines, my pancreas, my liver, my spleen, my stomach, my genitals, my intestines. Mind my mind. I command you to relax my intestines, my pancreas, my liver, my spleen, my stomach, my genitals. I command you, mind my mind, to relax my heart, my solar plexus, my lungs, my spine, my back. Mind, my mind, in the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, I command you to relax my solar plexus, my heart, my chest, my back, my lungs, my ribs. Mind, my mind, I command you to relax my solar plexus, my heart, my chest, my lungs, my back, my spine. In the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, I command your mind to relax my shoulders, my arms, my elbows, the lower part of my arms, my wrists, my hands, my fingers. Mind my mind. I command you to relax my shoulders, my arms, my elbows, the lower part of my arms, my wrists, my hands, my fingers. Mind my mind. I command you to relax my shoulders, my arms, my elbows, the lower part of my arms, my wrists, my hands, my fingers, mind, my mind, in the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, I command you to relax my neck, my chin, my lips, my tongue, my mouth, 
my nose, my eyes, my ears, my brain. I command your mind to relax my neck, my chin, my lips, my tongue, my mouth, my lips, my nose, my eyes, my ears, my brain. I command your mind to relax my neck, my chin, my lips, my tongue, my mouth, my lips, my nose, my eyes, my ears, my brain. In the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, I command your mind to relax my entire human organism, from my feet, from my feet to my brain. I command your mind to relax my entire human organism, from my feet to my brain. I command your mind to relax my entire human organism from my feet to my brain. Mind, my mind. Remember, mind, you should never be my boss. God is your Lord. My inner being is your Lord. And you are supposed to be a slave, a servant to the Lord. You have to learn mind to kneel down before the majesty of the divinity before the majesty of God. Don't forget that mind. You have to learn to become a temple. Not, not, you know, a place to hide demons within yourself, like the labyrinth, labyrinth that you have created, allowing the ego to control every thought within myself. From now on, mind my mind, you will become my servant and I'll be your Lord for an eternity. Mind my mind. I command you to relax my entire human organism from my toes to my brain. When you were giving your lecture, Jim, I was thinking of the motion picture Pinocchio. And believe it or not, the um, in the movie cartoon, they have Pleasure Island and if you recall, many of the characters went to Pleasure Island, and what did they get turned into? A donkey. And believe it or not, Pinocchio is all about this uh, wooden boy who wants to become a real boy. Well, that's symbolic, too, of um, we want to become real humans as well. And there was also something about the belly of a whale also. I'm not quite sure the total significance of that, but there's a lot of symbolism in that. And while you were giving the lecture, I was just uh, thinking of that, so. That's totally correct, you know. It is actually esoteric information to the world, you know, uh, using a lot of symbolism, but beautifully done. Actually, the man who created Pinocchio knew about this knowledge. Yes. Knew about this. Yes. My host is Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much, Rick.